Hello, my name is Caio Giacomini and in this video I'll be demonstrating how I used Wix to implement my sound redesign of Unity's 3D game kit project. Starting with pre-production, the first thing I did was create an asset tracking spreadsheet. I compile a list of every sound I needed to design and establish a naming convention, as well as specifics for the deliverables like the number of variations and channel count. I assigned a priority for each sound and created three columns to track each asset status between the stages of creation, middleware implementation, and in-engine integration. Then the last step was creating another sheet to define the pillars for my audio direction. I ended up settling on three pillars to guide my aesthetic decisions. Otherworldly, awe-inspiring, and pristine. The first set of sounds I worked on were the sounds for Ellen, our player character. I recorded and designed footsteps for all the different terrain types in the level, as well as sounds for the player landing and rolling on the ground. Those were implemented in Wise using random containers for each terrain, with pitch and volume randomization being played back via a switch container tied to the terrain switch. In the Unity side, the player controller script has a variable that stores the current material the player is standing on, so I created a dictionary type variable that links a group of Unity materials to a value in the Wise terrain switch. I then wrote a function that uses a dictionary to assign the switch value before playing the sound with the akSoundEngine.postEvent method. For the character voiceover, I had a friend come over to record all sorts of efforts for attacks, yeah, yeah, yeah. grunts, uh. and jumps. For the attack efforts, I'm making use of Wise's probability settings in the event level making it so each attack in the combo has a chance of not triggering a vocalization, with the exception of the last attack, for a more natural and less repetitive behavior. Yeah. 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 We also recorded short dialog barks in a gibberish language we made up for whenever a dialog box shows up on the screen. For the ambiences, I divided the level in two halves, the swamp, and the arena at the end. Each ambience is made of two components, a stereo bed playing as a consistent loop, paired with a collection of random containers playing all sorts of designed alien wildlife sounds on top of the bed. Each random container is set to loop continuously, with a healthy amount of randomization added to the volume, pitch, and delay time. I also enable 3D positioning and set it to the listener with automation setting, making it so sounds are given a random position around the listener whenever they play. The result is a very organic sounding ambience as there is no consistent repetition for the player to pick up. The random positioning also adds a sense of presence to the level as the location of the sounds move with the camera rotation. Each ambience has its own blend container that acts as a summing bus, making use of a switch container to crossfade between the two areas based on the player location state, with long fade time so everything sounds natural. For some extra dynamic behavior, I set up another state that ducks the random containers whenever the player walks into a cave, also applying a low-pass filter to the whole ambience. Besides these two broad strokes ambient systems, I also implemented a sound for the river using an AK ambient component 
with the position type set to large mode. For reverb zones, I use the same area division as the ambiences, so there's one reverb for the swamp, one for the arena, and a third one for the caves. They were set up via game-defined auxiliary sense in WISE, paired with trigger boxes with the AK environment component in Unity, as well as auxiliary triggers with the AK environment portal to create gradual transitions between reverb zones. For the chomper enemies spread throughout the level, I wanted to make sure they were always emitting some kind of sound in order to communicate their state to the player, as well as to help them feel more alive. They have a random container that plays growls tied to their idle animations, a sound for spotting the player, which in turn triggers a briefing sound that loops as they run towards the player. And of course, vocalizations for attacking and taking damage. For the design itself, the main element of the vocalization is my own voice, which was heavily processed and layered with a tiger growl and frog sounds. The vocalizations for the boss enemy were also designed using my voice as a source. Much like the chomper, every action of the boss is accompanied by sound. On top of all the one-shots I did for the boss's attacks, footsteps and damage, there's also a looping sound attached to its energy core. For that sound, I'm making use of Wise's cone attenuation settings to make it so the sounds get louder when the player is behind the boss, helping to guide them towards their objective. I also have an RTPC tied to the boss's health, which I'm using to drive a series of wise effects on the energy core sound, dynamically processing the sound to amp up the tension and provide feedback to the player as they progress through the fight. For the interactables spread throughout the level, their sounds were implemented either straight into the code with the akSoundEngine.postEvent method, or using animation events with a custom script I wrote. For the attenuation share sets, I ended up sharing sets for similar groups of items but didn't shy away of creating more specific ones where needed making use of Wise's capability to control filtering and stereo spread over distance on top of the volume attenuation. I also use custom curves to define the auxiliary send volumes where needed, to make it so the farther an object is, the more the environment affects the sound. This is most noticeable in the boss's footstep sounds. Design-wise, the boss's footsteps are made out of two layers, the metal impact of the foot on the ground, followed by a servo motor sound to accompany its walking motions. On the Y side, I divided the footsteps into two random containers, one with the servo motor pitch going up, and another with it going down. Both of these containers are then tied to a sequence container to make sure that the motor sound is always alternating between the up and down motions whenever the footstep event is called. One notable use of attenuation sets paired with an RTPC is for the door opening cutscenes. I set up a blend container that plays two instances of the same door sound, one being played back with positioning and attenuation enabled 
and the other one without it, using an RTPC to crossfade between the two versions in a blend track. This way, while the camera is looking at the door during the cutscene, the player hears the fixed stereo sound, but when the camera goes back to the player, the RTPC crossfades to the spatialized sound. This makes it so the tail end of the door sound acts as a cue that reinforces the location of the door to the player after the camera snaps back into position. Another notable use of RTPCs I made is for the portal sound at the end of the level. I created an RTPC bound to the distance built-in parameter to dynamically alter several aspects of the sound as the player gets closer to the portal. The first thing it's doing is similar to the door sounds. It's using a blend container to crossfade between a 3D and a stereo version of the sound. The portal sound itself is then divided into three layers. A high, a mid and a low one, with all of them looping asynchronously. For the low layer, the distance RTPC simply controls its voice volume, making it louder as the player approaches it. For the high layer, the RTPC is controlling the pitch on top of the volume. And for the mid layer, the RTPC is again controlling the pitch, and it's also driving a tremolo effect that gets more intense as the player gets closer to it. The result is a sound that invites the player to walk into it as it gets more and more interesting and intense with each step the player takes with the intention of giving the player a satisfactory sonic payoff for completing the level. Thank you for watching through the end. I hope this video clearly demonstrates how I use the tools that Wise has to offer to solve problems and enhance the game feel through sound design.